We started Anki while we were still in grad school at Carnegie Mellon. We were all studying robotics, AI, machine learning, all these technologies. And then we would just work the whole day on what became our first product. We started with, uh, with Overdrive. All robots in movies I can think of have a very interesting, well-defined personality. That's why we connect with them and that's why we love them. We've had this promise in science fiction of all the robots that could exist. In reality, what we have are robots that have been used for industrial, military, space, and research applications, but very rarely have these technologies reached consumers. There's been very few applications where a robot has really felt like a character that connects with humans around it. For that, you really need artificial intelligence and robotics. That's been the missing key. We had developed enough of the technology and underlying infrastructure to really bring a character to life in the real world. It brings together all of these backgrounds and areas of expertise that have never coexisted in one company. Mechanical engineering, robotics, AI, computer vision to world-class animators, sound engineers, game designers. And that's where Cosmo comes in. This is Cosmo. 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 Cosmo is a rambunctious little kid. A little bit mischievous. He's smart. A lot of robot in a very small package. All the technology inside of Cosmo is really there for one reason, to bring the magic of a robotic character to life. It's a very complex system and has four transmissions inside of it with probably 40 or 50 gears. Each robot is made out of over 300 different parts. There's the AI systems, the robotics, the accelerometers, the animation, the gyros, the computer vision. We're running an extremely complicated artificial intelligence inside the robot, which needs to make thousands and thousands of decisions per second. He's a mobile manipulator. He can drive around the world. He can see you. He can recognize you. He looked up at me, and his eyes went, whoa. And I was like, whoa, he just recognized me. It gives you goosebumps because you realize that this is a little character who actually understands who you are and what role you play in his world. Figuring out the path to a unique personality, is, it's an ongoing question. I think we did about 40, 50 studies on just little nuances. Looking at the interface with the monitor where the eyes are going to look at you, Cosmo moves the head and, and follows you. Every little detail has its special attention paid to it. We literally have a rigged up version of Cosmo in Maya where our animators can animate him using the exact same techniques that they would use for digital characters. Except the output isn't rendered, the output is actually Cosmo behaving in the real world. We've been looking for ways to make it either feel more organic, more imperfect, so that it feels more animated. Sound is a critical piece. It's the one dimension where we have full control, just like in a movie or a video game. We're building his procedural voice system. We're doing all these things so that as you interact with Cosmo, he becomes his own thing. One of the things that makes Cosmo so surprising and so lovable is that he defies your expectations. We're creating something that really does feel like it's part of the family. Those are the moments we usually don't share with machines or robots until now. Cosmo is a pioneer for the ability to create characters and tell stories in the real world. With this technology, we can make additional characters with new capabilities, new personalities at a level that we've never seen before.